standing on holy ground. And I know that there are angels all around. Let us praise Jesus now. standing in his presence on holy ground in his presence there is joy beyond measure and at his feet peace of mind can still be Reach out and claim it. You are standing on holy ground. We are standing on holy ground. And I know that there are angels all around. Today the uh, sermon is about forgiveness. Have you ever forgiven anybody? Was it difficult? Well, the word forgiven is uh, used over 60 times in the, the Bible. Forgiven is used 48 times. Forgiveness is 18, forgive twice and forgiving four times. So, the word forgive or forgiveness is an important word for us as Christian people. If you read the passage prior to this uh, text for today, uh, it tells how to forgive your enemies, whatever, but today it's talking about Christian friends if they sin against you. And from time to time, that will happen. Somebody might sin against you, maybe by omission, not realizing what they've done, but they will. But these three words, I forgive you, I think are three of the toughest words that you and I can utter as individuals when you've been hurt by a fellow Christian. You've been hurt, misunderstood, or maybe even rejected but they are important words to us as Christian people and in our lives together. And Jesus taught on that subject. Forgiveness is what we receive when we confess faith in Christ, and we know that. We can only pass on then what we have received. If we know what true forgiveness is, when somebody sins against us, we can forgive. And it's difficult at times. But with the grace of God and the help of God, we can do this. We can make it possible to forgive somebody and for them to experience that forgiveness. Forgiveness was on the minds of the disciples when they asked Jesus, how many times, especially Peter, who was his spokesperson, how, many, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? And the question asked by Peter refers to, as we've said, to Christian brothers and sisters. Rather than waiting for uh, Jesus to answer, Peter blurted out the answer. Until seven times? Well, Peter knew the Old Testament scriptures, so it says there that 
uh, forgiveness would be for three times or four. Peter comes along and says seven, so he's being very generous. You'll find those references that over Amos chapter one and two, if you want to read that later on. So for three sins, God would forgive for sure. And Peter must have sensed that Jesus wanted the disciples to extend themselves even further, so he doubles the standard and adds one more. He may have increased the times to seven because seven is a perfect number in religious circles, especially the Jews, which symbolizes perfection or completion. But Jesus proposes something different. Seventy-sevens is 490 times you are to forgive. That is a command for us today. We are to observe that. And the, seven, the number seven and 77 may come from Genesis four. For there God pronounces sevenfold vengeance on anyone who would kill Cain. And then in uh, verse 24 there of that chapter, Lamish extends it to 77, anyone who might kill him. So if the number seven and 77 in Matthew are derived from Genesis, they provide an odd twist. Or in Genesis, the number refer, refers to vengeance, while in Matthew, they refer to forgiveness. So the answer of Jesus raises him questions. Are we at the mercy of an uncaring and unrepentant sinner? Does he eliminate touch, touch, no, touch of love? Does he make us an easy mark for unscrupulous people? Those are questions I think we need to look at. But having stated his requirement for forgiveness, Jesus tells a parable. And the parable is a rather long one. Therefore the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his slaves. And he began to settle then. One owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him and this servant pleaded for mercy. Now as we look at the numbers there, a day's wage equals one denarius. And 6,000 denarii equals one talent. When you multiply these figures out, you arrive at a working man wages for 60 million days or 200,000 years. So that would be 60 million days that a servant would have to pay back, the amount he would have to pay back. But this indebted servant did not have the money to pay the king. The king then demanded that uh, he be sold along with his wife and his children and all that he had and uh, repayment be made. So the, the slave begged the king, have time, give me time, I'm sorry. Have patience with me and I will repay you everything. And there's no way possible that he could repay all that money in his lifetime. Because a slave could not pay that debt, the king commanded him to be sold along with his wife, his children, and all he had, and payment be made to him. The slave was pleased by the king who relented, moved with compassion, and released him and forgave the debt. That's a great debt to forgive. The freed slave went out and his debt was paid in sense. But he found one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii and he seized him and began to choke him and saying, pay up, pay back if what you owe me. So the indebted servant pleaded with him saying, have patience with me and I will repay you. But the slave who had been given, forgiven of his large debt was unwilling and threw the fellow slave who owed so much or so little amount into prison. And we note in the scripture though that the language of the two slaves is the same, but the size of the debt is much bigger between the two. Now in those days there was an unwritten rule that obligated those whose debts were forgiven would be expected to forgive the ones who owed them. 
they were to abide by the same rule and would be highly offended when they failed to do so. When these fellow slaves saw that uh, the one who had lost their money was treated wrong, they went to the king and they told him what had happened. Then the king called back in the one who owed that great deal of money and said to him, I forgive you. I forgave you all the debts because you pleaded with me. And he asked the question, should you not have mercy on your fellow slaves in the same way I had mercy on you? The parable ends with a, as the king was moved to anger, handed the slaves over to those who owed him so much, is turned over to be tortured and he could repay all that he owed. Then the language of the text suddenly changes here. Jesus is no longer telling a story about a distant king, but is speaking directly to his disciples. And he repeats the warning found in his sermon on the mount. There he taught us to ask God to forgive our trespasses. But he warns, if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither would your God forgive your trespasses. That's a hard and a fast rule, but it tells us that we have to forgive fellow Christians. 70 times seven, meaning almost forever. But he tells us we must forgive from our hearts. And the forgiveness, I think, is worthless. So as Christians who've been hurt, y'all, you are to forgive from your heart those who have offended you, insulted you, spoke against you. My father sat at a dinner meal with his three children ages 13, 14, and 17. And he asked this question, what have you learned about forgiveness through what has happened in your life? The first child spoke about our scripture day by saying, since God has bestowed his grace upon us, we also need to be gracious towards others and extend forgiveness to others. The second child spoke, forgiveness is God's work, not ours. He doesn't force us to forgive, but he helps us and gives us love that we need to be able to forgive. Even if they say they are sorrow, I still choose to forgive them because they are a son or a daughter of God. The third child spoke. When Jesus was on the cross, he was able to look down on those who had abused him, persecuted him, and sentenced him to death and say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So to recap the statements of the children, Forgiveness is something that God commands us to do. Forgiveness is God's work, not ours. Forgiveness is a process. One writer wrote these words, an unforgiving, vengeful, or bitter spirit will not only affect you and those around, around you, and it will. It can turn you into a better, bitter person a lonely person if you cannot forgive. I remember hearing about Dietrich Bonhoeffer, a theologian in World War II. Uh, he, writ, he wrote articles, a very good theologian, and you've heard the words grace and cheap grace. And I believe in my heart that Dietrich Bonhoeffer, as well as many other, who had been deeply offended hurt by non-Christians and perhaps by Christians were able to forgive. The Lord's Prayer says, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And as the body of Christ, that forgiving spirit is needed within the life of the church. You have heard stories in the past Somebody wanted red carpet, the other wanted green or purple or whatever it was. And a church has split because of little issues like that. 
They couldn't agree. And one would get angry, and who knows? Out the door of the church, they were gone. So little issues can, can become big issues. But we must strive as Christians to practice the teachings of Jesus Christ. And in order to do that, we need to turn to God in prayer to endue us with a grace so that we can forgive. If not, you're not walking according to scripture. You're walking against the will of God. And I believe that you're grieving the Holy Spirit. Forgive your brothers, your sisters. Reach out to them with grace and with love. And as you do, I believe that you'll be blessed of God because you can go home or wherever you're going with a clear conscience and you've obeyed the rule of God, of Jesus Christ. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Forget and you'll need to do a little heart searching and turn to God. But we can practice the teachings of Christ if we want to. We have the choice, or we can deny them. So I just encourage you to practice the teachings of Christ. Now today, I don't know who the sermon was for. It might be just for me, but still yet. You've heard it too, so let's do it together. Let's walk with the Christ. Amen.